All right, Ricky, I've got a building design joke for you. Okay. Why was the electrical conduit running all throughout the building? I don't know why. Because the engineer told it to get in the chase. <laughs>、Folks, Ricky McLean here of Woodworks. Welcome back to yet another edition of Timber Talk Tuesday. Today, we're going to focus on gaps or chases between CLT floor panels. I had the conversation to discuss recently with Katie Rittenauer, a structural engineer with KPFF. Now, Katie has worked on several mass timber projects, including a few that have used this concept of gaps or chases between CLT floor panels. Katie discusses what are some of the benefits of using these chases or gaps between CLT floor panels. We discuss fire, structural diaphragm, and structural gravity loading implications of using these chases and gaps between panels, as well as some of the options for covering or not covering up the final conditions and what you need to know from a design perspective. So I'll get right out of the way. Let's move over to the conversation that I had with Katie Rittenauer of KPFF. All right, Katie. Well, thank you for joining me today. First question is why do the gapped panels? What do they benefit the project? So I'd say the, the first reason why we tend to start exploring the gapped panels or what I kind of call the CLT chase is to provide、um, MEP flexibility in routing. And、um, clearly, we're not going to be using these chases for large you know, mechanical systems. We're not going to be fitting ducts or this because we only have the depth of the CLT panel to work with. So here we're really talking about. How can we add more flexibility in routing the sprinkler lines, the smaller conduits, you know, wiring?、Um, because again, you know,、uh, glue lamp construction, or I guess mass timber construction in general, has a lot more limitations on beam penetrations.、Um, in addition to, you know, we want to also kind of keep the mechanical as clean as possible because we want to kind of expose and see the mass timber. So a secondary benefit that comes kind of hand in hand is that、um, we also just get to、um, account for the reduction in CLT. You know, we we now that we have gaps in the panels, we just have less CLT square footage that we're putting into the project. Helps reduce some cost.、Um, so that's kind of a secondary benefit that comes、um, because of the incorporation of the chase. The other secondary benefit is just a little bit more construction tolerance for the contractor in the field. We all know mass timber is designed to really tight tolerances, so having a little bit more flexibility and placement of these panels can be really beneficial to the project. Got it. That's perfect. I I think those are all great benefits to a project. So,、uh, one question on the design side: using the CLT chases or gapped panels. Normally, your CLT panels would be acting as the fire resistance rated assembly. Obviously, now you've created the gaps or the chases between the panels. So, how are you maintaining the fire rating of that floor assembly? Great question. So, yeah, we actually start leveraging a concrete topping slab above the CLT as our fire rating. So, you'll need to kind of be, think, clo pay close attention to what kind of concrete you're using. If you have lightweight concrete on your project, you can usually get that fire rating just in that concrete topping slab. Um, but if you have normal weight, you might need to start leveraging some other materials for your fire rating. And we've done, you know, we've added that plywood, which is the formwork for the topping over the chase、um, system as part of that fire rating.、Um, sometimes, depending on the thickness, we have to add a little layer of chip as well. So again, you can kind of provide the addition of materials to get to your fire rating、um, above that gap. And what are you generally seeing for the thickness of that concrete topping layer? Um, typically, three inches is the minimum we'd ever want to go because of you know we want rebar in here. We want it to perform well because it's typically being used actually as the floor finish.、Um, but and we also、um, tend to start leveraging it as the diaphragm because the second we start incorporating a concrete slab in our mass timber buildings, we want to leverage it as much as possible. We just don't want it to be dead weight that adds more weight to the building's gravity and、um, lateral system. All right, Katie. One one additional question is: What are you typically using for、uh, the panel width relative to the chase width, and how does that chase width affect the structural design of the panel itself? Great question. So,、um, as we kind of know, the all the CLT manufacturers have different panel widths. So, depending on what manufacturer we end up with,、um, but usually. It will be vary from like eight to like nine or close to ten feet width,、um, and then the the chase width that we kind of end up with 
usually at max I'd say is two feet and we've gone as um, I guess as not as wide, I guess as thin as nine inches wide. Um, and, and that's totally dependent on the capacity of your panel. Essentially, you know, we, we want to leverage as much um, of the panel strength as possible. So, um, but when we're starting to incorporate these chases, we have to add to that strip of um, um, panel right next to the chase, that tributary load from the chase itself. So we can't really um, max out the, the panel capacity 100% because again, we have to take a, into account that additional tributary width. So it's really once, it's really kind of a play between what, what is your manufacturer in the end? What are your loads? You know, so once you kind of have your manufacturer, you can really fine tune that and then do the coordination with the architect after, you know, you kind of have that set up. Right. Finding the appropriate balance there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, thank you very much, Katie. This is it's really interesting. I know you've done several of these projects that have used the Chase CLT system, and it sounds like it's definitely provided some benefit. Maybe it's not the best fit for all projects, but certainly worth pursuing um, for people that are looking at mass timber projects. So thank you very much for lending your insights on this topic. Very welcome. Thanks for inviting me here today. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Katie. I do think this option of gaps or chases between CLT floor panels is yet another tool in the tool belt of building designers when we look at how do we integrate the MEPF systems throughout a master building, coordination, minimizing penetrations. These are all potential benefits of using this system in a master building. Not to say this works always, but something to consider for you as you look at your next mass timber project. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you later.